I am in Delhi, India, and in this video, we will visit three must-see places, the India Gate, the Red Fort, and Old Delhi. One of these places, though, is going to be pretty intense. Oh, check it out. This is a disaster here. I'm not sure if I have ever been in a more chaotic area than this. Is it still worth it to visit these must-see places in Delhi? I also want to see what it's like to spend a typical day as a tourist in this town. Let's find out. Feel free to join. And here we are, the India Gate. Wow. Oh, I always really enjoy it when I'm standing in front of very famous places for the first time seeing these places with my own eyes. So this is a cool moment for me actually. And yeah, as you can see, it's very popular to visit this place, not only by foreign tourists. To be honest, I don't see any other foreign tourists here uh, except myself. So very, very busy here with local tourists. I would assume that most of the people here are Indian tourists, maybe from other states, from other cities. And yeah, this gate right here resembles the Arc de Triomphe in France, in Paris actually. And it was built in 1921. And it is actually a war memorial in honors of the soldiers who have fallen in the First World War. And actually the names of 90,000 of these soldiers... Hello, namaste. Yeah, the names of 90,000 of these soldiers are actually engraved into the walls, which uh, I can see from here. It's maybe difficult to see it on the camera. And yeah, unfortunately, I'm not allowed to go any closer. But yeah, I can see all the, the names engraved on the walls here and here and in the middle as well. Might be my favorite place that I have seen so far in Delhi. Again? This magnet. Just have a looking. Oh. India Gate, Kutub Minar, Lotus. Oh, you are uh, from the gate here? Yeah, this one. 5 for 150. 5 for 150? Yeah. yeah. India Gate? I just need one to be honest. One is 40 rupees. One is 40 rupees? Yeah. And this one? Oh, actually, this looks this not too one bad. 50. And this one, big one you buy? Big one. Oh, this is maybe all, India Gate all well. different big one. Let me uh, see how it looks actually here. Yeah. Looks quite the same. And then the other one here? Oh, also. <laughs> same, same. It's a good picture. Yeah, this oh. one Akshadham, yeah. Red Fort, Taj Mahal, Tuk Tuk. Tuk Tuk? Oh, auto rickshaw here. Yeah. <laughs> Lotus. Okay, how much for two? Two for 70 and 40. One 70 and 40? You buy not Tuk Tuk? No, no Tuk Tuk. You buy num I prefer the, the gate actually, to elephant? be honest. No elephant. You buy Indian flag? How much for these two? Give me 100 rupees. 100? Okay. okay. Oh, well, let's buy a little souvenir here right away, why not? You gonna take more? Just two. Two is okay. Give me two more, you have souvenir. Uh, I'm happy with two. Okay, okay Thank 100. You. Thank you, Danyavat. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's support uh, some of the vendors here, why not? And actually, quite a nice souvenir here with the India Gate. I don't have a fridge, I'm not going home anytime soon. But still, this is a great memory. I'm actually surprised, to be honest, uh, that there are not more people here trying to sell some things. He's literally the only guy that approached me since I am here. I'm here for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes now in total. And he was the only guy who approached me so far. So that is actually a good, good impression here. You can visit a tourist place in India in the center of Delhi, also without being uh, attacked by street vendors or people trying to sell you some things. That is a good impression here. But yeah, let's continue to the next spot. We have a few places to visit today here in Delhi. Excuse me, how can I exit? Underground. Ah, underground. Ah. By underpass. Underpass. Yeah. Okay, then you watch. Ah, so, yeah, there's an underpass here. And uh, I arrived on the other side and then I used this pass already. And seems like you also have to exit using the underground. So you can't even exit on uh, this side of the road here. Thank you. thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Yes, sir. Go to Rickshaw. All right. No, thank Old you. Old Delhi, Old Delhi, Port, Chandni, Chow, ah. Spice Market. No, thank you. Market. All right. And I am now at the Red Fort, which is one of the must see places here in Delhi. Actually, I think I am not at the entrance, but the taxi driver told me that he is not allowed to drive any further than this point. Yes, So I think I have to walk the rest. Yes, ah, no, thank you. Oh, no, thank looking. you. No, no, no. Other one side in Delhi more. No, I would like to walk. Looking you, other one side in Delhi more. That's okay. Other one side, all Delhi market. You don't need to waste your time with me. I want to walk. You're walking very too much. Sir. That's okay. Thank you. No, 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 thank you. All Delhi market. All right. So, I think actually this is the Red 4 already. 
and the, the tuk-tuk drivers they want to offer me a tour Whew, yeah you have to get used to that when you're in delhi as soon as you leave the taxis or as soon as you arrive at these touristy areas there will be plenty of people uh, trying to sell you something or offering you a ride okay we have indian ladies indian gents and foreign tourists okay let me actually try to figure out if this is the right place here so ticket counter normal value ticket oh check it out this is the the price for for the locals it's 50 rupee and if you pay cash less it's 35 that's also interesting you get a discount if you pay without cash and then the price for foreigners is 600 that is more than 10 times the price for the locals that is interesting and also you get a discount of 50 rupee if you pay by card double pricing here in india as well which actually happens in uh, many asian countries i know that thailand for example is also having double pricing systems but this is crazy like more than 10 times the the local price but anyway i'm happy to visit this place hello namaste one ticket please so i paid 600 ah, no thank you 100 no thank you just a little piece of paper here so you need to be careful not to uh, lose it or destroy it uh, you maybe saw me almost losing this little piece of paper in the delhi metro before you also only get a small piece there oh actually i should have asked where's the main entrance is this the entrance here ah there's a sign visitor entrance gate all right so i guess i have to walk around a bit so we can see the quite impressive walls here already wow this actually looks really amazing already just from the outside and yeah the red fort is yeah one of the must-see places here in delhi one of the most famous places also many local tourists come to visit this place wow check it out how lively it is here to be honest i have the feeling that this is the main entrance area so i'm wondering why my taxi driver dropped me over there because this one actually looks way more like the actual entrance so i walked for i don't know three four five minutes now so it wasn't actually that far yeah so there's also a ticket counter here so you can also buy the ticket here although this ticket counter looks way busier so maybe it was good that i was able to buy it over there and then i think i have to go around here and tough security here even a uh, military with heavy machine guns here but i have the feeling that this is kind of normal here in india based on my impressions on my first days here and here we are the main entrance to the red fort in delhi actually i really like to visit historical places whenever i'm at these places i always try to imagine how it used to be back in the days walking through this gate people walked through here hundreds of years ago already and it must have been even more impressive a few hundred years ago you know probably like i don't know about 100 meters high i guess and then up there we have a big indian flag super impressive so far and also it looks very uh, solid like proper rocks here Whew. oh and many many people inside here check it out Whew. yeah this is a weekend here this is saturday afternoon at the moment and you have a vendor selling some souvenirs here yeah typical tourist souvenirs i think oh, i'm actually surprised you enter this place and the first thing that you come across or the first things you come across are just, are just uh, shops after shops wow this is not what i would have expected to be honest yeah, it looks like a market hall here now what is this oh. oh you want to visit a historical fort and not a market when you come here right interesting okay that's unexpected and yeah they're literally all selling the same items basically typical tourist stuff yeah that's interesting check it out there's even an eiffel tower here and the big ben the the liberty statue from new york what are these things have to do with the red fort here i mean if i would buy something here then i would buy like maybe a little replica of the red fort but who buys an eiffel tower here the Red Fort was built about 400 years ago in the 17th century by a king called Shah Jahan. It served as the main residence of the emperors of the Mughal dynasty for nearly 200 years. And yeah, inside there are several small buildings, garden areas and halls. And yeah, the name Red Fort comes from the red sandstone walls which surround the whole area. 
This is an interesting fact here. So this was the emperor's private palace and they had animal fights here, for example, between lions and elephants. Yeah, animal fights such as between lions and elephants were organized below this palace for the entertainment of royals. That is interesting. Can you imagine a lion fighting with an elephant? So that was probably happening somewhere down here, maybe. Or maybe there's like a bigger area underneath here that we can't see now and can't enter, I think. All right, and I am back at the beginning. I took around half an hour to explore the whole area. And to be completely honest, I was expecting something a little bit different. It was mainly like visiting a park. The whole area inside is super beautiful. It feels like walking around the park with some very historical, cool looking buildings here and there. But overall, it didn't really feel like visiting a fort, you know? And the most impressive part is the entrance area here, which is really, really impressive. But I was expecting that there will be more places similar, like the entrance area all around basically. Not saying that the experience was bad, just saying that I was expecting something a little bit different. So when you happen to visit this area, don't expect like a fort with walls like this all around. Better expect a nice park to visit. No, it's okay. No, 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 thank you. Spice market, wedding market, silver market, Jama Majid. No, no, no. No, thank you. No, thank you. Tell me about Some place, sir, excuse me, some place top, some place walking, some place retired. I think guide and driving. That's okay, but I don't need a driver now. Little bit of charge, not more. No, thank you. 200 rupees more. No, Daniel, but no. Are you from UK? Are you from? No, I'm not from the UK. Okay, you know, Bye bye. Yeah, you have to uh, learn to say no in India. So, this is another shot from the, the beautiful, the astonishing part of the fort. Yeah, from here it really looks amazing like the outside areas and the main gate that looks really impressive all right and basically right next to the red fort over there is an area that has been recommended to me a lot called chandi chok even the staff on the airplane when i was flying to delhi recommended this place to visit oh no thank you so let's uh, head over there it should be basically the whole area around there so we just need to find a way to uh, cross the road here uh, which could be difficult maybe uh, if we go over there maybe i'm just going to follow the locals here it seems to be okay 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 oh 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 oh, oh. yeah when in doubt just follow the locals usually that's a very good technique oh and what's up with the honking here oh my lord <laughs> Welcome to India, I guess. Okay, so this seems to be the unofficial crossing of the road here. Used by many people. I'm wondering, why is there not an official uh, crossing over there? Oh, and I lost the locals that I followed. Now I'm on my own. Namaste. <laughs> Oh, and I missed the opportunity to cross. Hello, namaste. Oh, how do I cross here now? Oh, I think this is a policeman. I'm just going to follow him. All right. That was easy, actually. Okay, let me navigate through all the tuk-tuks here. Check out how many of these tuk-tuks are here. Must be like hundreds of them just standing on the corner here. Yeah, I can already feel this is going to be an interesting area to visit. So I'm very curious actually. So, can I walk through here? <laughs> Looks like a gate to me, but everyone could walk through. Okay. Yes, I can. All right, here we are. Chandi Chuk, also known as Old Delhi. As far as I'm aware. It's a very historical part of the city here. This is basically the area where Delhi started hundreds of years ago. Okay, so we also have, uh, I'm not sure how you call that, like tuk-tuks that are like a bicycle. Do you call that rickshaw? I would call it a rickshaw. But I'm not sure what's the official word here. So you see them all around here. So I would guess that they can only like cycle around the area here, which seems to be closed for any cars or the regular tuk-tuks. Yeah, but to be honest, I would feel bad if I would let an old man, most of the, the guys here seem to be pretty old, if I would let an old man cycle me around town. Oh wow, this area is intense. 
If you don't like to be around people, then this is definitely the wrong place for you. Namaste. And yeah, I can't walk uh, 100 meter here without uh, being asked if I want to buy something, if I want to ride. So you really have to learn how to say no here, but just keep walking. It is a sensory overload area in an interesting way. I really enjoy walking down the road here. Probably I wouldn't uh, walk down this road every day, but for the first time here it's actually interesting. And what I uh, find interesting to see here is it seems to be a cultural melting pot. You see many Muslims here, you see Hindus. Also we have the biggest mosque in uh, India around the corner here, the Jama Masjid. So that probably explains why you can see so many Muslims here. But I really find that interesting, like a cultural melting pot. Everyone seems to like melt together here. That's actually really interesting. And here, yeah, like everywhere, we have these little side alleys here, which uh, seem to be even busier, more crowded. Ah, yeah, here we have a proof of what I thought. So cars and motorcycles are not allowed here between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. That's why you only see these uh, bicycle rickshaws here. I'm wondering what's the spice market because every single driver who approaches me uh, says something about a spice market. Spice market, to be honest, doesn't sound interesting to me. Probably that would be my guess. They get commissions there when they drop me off there. And if I end up buying something. Oh, I feel like this area doesn't end. I'm walking for well over half an hour already. The whole time basically through areas looking like this. And I can't seem to find an end. I feel like there must be an end to this area somehow. Like, oh, like, an, like an open space, normal roads again, you know? <laughs> this is intense here. Sensory overload everywhere. Oh, namaste. Oh, people driving everywhere on the sidewalk, on the road. And I'm thirsty, I'm looking for something like a, like a convenience store, like a 7-Eleven type of shop where I can buy something cool to drink. Yeah, and as you can imagine, the air here is not the best. I, I feel it already in my throat. But that was to be expected. I'm not saying that I expected something else. Oh wow, this is... I think this is a very stereotype India that you imagine when you come to a city like Delhi. Oh my god. Oh, check it out. This is a disaster here. How do people get through this? Hello. This is like a dead end here now. Where do I go? <laughs> Let's see if I can pass somewhere here. Oh wow. Okay, maybe I can uh, walk around here. Oh. Maybe not. Okay. The traffic continues to move. Oh. No, no, no. There was a, a gap open for like a few seconds. But now maybe there's a gap here. Okay, okay. Alright. Danyevat, thank you. Okay, I'm stuck again. Okay, and here we go. I'm through. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's how intense it can be just to, to cross the road. That is insane and look at the traffic here. It's, just, it's literally not moving. Wow. I'm very happy that I'm not in a vehicle stuck in this traffic here to be honest. And today is a weekend. I would imagine that the traffic is even worse here on a weekday. Oh, another driver on the, on the side road. Oh, wow, this is the India you imagine, right? The stereotype chaotic India. But as we have seen already in my previous video, not every corner of the city looks like this. I found a metro station. So this would be an easy exit now. If I just take the metro to another part of the town. But I think I don't want this easy exit now. By the way, it's an hour now in this area. Probably just a few minutes for you in the video, but I'm already in this area for an hour now. And I just checked uh, Google Maps where I'm actually heading to. And I think if I keep walking for another few hundred meters, then there should be a bit of an open space area. I want to get out of this area, you know, like somewhere a bit more quiet and less busy because it gets a bit stressful. 
but I'm not complaining. I was expecting exactly this here in Old Delhi and I'm still looking for something to drink. I'm wondering, I can't seem to find any convenience stores here or shops where I can buy bottled water. I'm just thinking, imagine an accident happens here, how long it would take for an ambulance to actually reach this point. Yeah, I definitely don't want to be involved in an accident in this area because I think chances are high that you're waiting for a long time until help arrives. Okay, I'm giving up after over an hour in here and I can't seem to find a way out. And I do have a goal now where I want to go. I want to go to Connaught Place, which is a place I have been to before on their holy day. And I think it's way quieter and a bit more relaxed there. But I think it would be quite far to walk. And I am here already for yeah, over an hour now. So I think I'm actually going to take one of the guys that can give me a lift. So one of the, the rickshaw or tricycle drivers here. I think these are electric, by the way. So we have the ones on the bicycle and we have the electric ones. So I think I'm still in an area where cars are not allowed. Yeah, this one, for example. Hello, I want to go to Connor Place. Connor Place, yeah. Need. You can get me there? No, no I cannot. You're not allowed to. You're not allowed there, right? Yeah. But you can get me somewhere close. What is he saying? I'm not sure if they are trying to help me. Are you trying to help me? He cannot go to Connor Place, right? You are right. <laughs> he, he's not allowed there, right? Okay. But can he... Uh, Drop me off somewhere close. You are dropped. Yeah? Okay, how much kidna peso? 150. 150? Okay. Alright, let's escape this area. Yeah, the local guy said 150 is okay. I don't really know where I am. And I don't really know how long we need. But to be honest, I think we will take a lot of time because the traffic here is intense as you have seen already. Okay. Whew, that was sensory overload. Deluxe. I'm not sure if I have ever been in a more chaotic area than this. I have seen many chaotic cities around the world. I'm thinking about Manila in the Philippines, which is also very chaotic in the center. Kathmandu, Nepal. Maybe Colombo, Sri Lanka. Jakarta, Indonesia. Although Jakarta, Southeast Asia in general, uh, unless Manila feels way more relaxed than South Asia, to be honest. So this is probably one of the most busiest areas I have ever visited. But it is definitely an experience, so I don't regret coming here at all. But will I come here again? Probably not, to be honest. Okay, let's see how long we actually need. Let me check the time, it is now 4.40. And yeah, I do think that this vehicle here is electric. It doesn't make a lot of noise. It uh, sounds very quiet. And I think you can in theory even fit four people here. So one here, one here, one here and then one here. And it seems to be quite popular here. Usually you see all these yellow tuk-tuks all around Delhi. But yeah, because they are not allowed in this area, you see all these electric tuk-tuks here. And some are like bicycles. So powered by the strong legs of the people here. Hello, namaste. <laughs> what I have to say, the people here are very friendly. Like many people smile or wave at me saying hello. But yeah, what is up with the honking in India? I don't understand why they like to honk here so much. If you're from India, please let me know what's up with all the honking. Oh, this is also an interesting uh, way of transportation here. Probably this is not an official taxi or something. Just his friend giving him a lift. And I think we, I see like there's something like a gate or something. So maybe this is the end of the area. Okay, so this is the gate I was talking about. Let's see if uh, he's going to drop me off here or if we continue. But here I think this is a normal area again. So we have all these uh, regular uh, tuk-tuks here. So these drivers already offering me a ride. So maybe they expect me uh, to be dropped off here. Okay, I think we're entering a proper road now. So I am a bit surprised. Now we have sugarcane by the side of the road. We have some vendors selling some juices, I think. Whew, and there's wind blowing into my face now, which feels nice. 
after this area over there. So for the first time in an hour I feel like oh, normal air again. Whew, this is nice. Oh, and I think this is the back side of the Delhi uh, railway station actually. So I think I know actually where I am now. What's going on? You're making a U-turn over there? Yeah. Okay, for some reason uh, we're just making a U-turn in front of the new Delhi railway station. So we're driving back now where we're coming from. So I'm not sure why there's some U-turn. Yeah, so we are here now and where I want to go, Connaught Place is this area, so it's actually not far. So we just made a U-turn right here. So we could have just drove down this the road here and then we would have reached the, the place already. So I'm wondering why the sudden U-turn. And it seems like we are driving away from the destination now rather than approaching it. And check it out, the trucks here have even written on it, blow horn. And I saw many trucks that have this writing on it, blow the horn. So the trucks encouraging the people behind them to actually blow the horn. Okay, and we have left the main road. We took a left turn and now we are on this road right here. So I think Connor Place should be like basically at the end of this road here now. I don't think it's far anymore. Hello. Hello, namaste. Oh, I almost can't believe it. It is quiet here for a moment. Oh, and there's a honking again. But for like a few seconds it was actually quiet here. You hear? Oh, you don't hear anything, right? That's the point. Oh wow, what's going on? This seems to be unusual. All of a sudden, all the noises are gone. Oh, and the honking continues. <laughs> Why? I don't understand this. Oh. <laughs> oh. Permission, Nikhil. Here? Ah, okay, okay. Done your Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Bye bye. All right, total length of the journey was now about half an hour. But yeah, I also think that he made the journey way longer by taking this U turn. I still don't really understand why he did the U turn. But anyway, I have arrived. That is uh, the most important thing. Okay, I now try to find a restaurant. There's a restaurant in this area that has been recommended to me. And this is the restaurant I'm looking for, Zero Degrees. Hello, namaste. Do you have this one here? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Table for one. Table for one, please, yeah. All right. Whew, and the chair is very comfortable. Whew, after the few hours now out there in the city, this feels very refreshing. And have a look at this. Pizza in a jar. That is what I am interested about. That sounds very special. I've never seen something like this before. I would like to get the pizza in a jar. Veg, non-veg? Uh, non-veg. Okay. First of all, a cold water. The first water for a few hours. Much needed. First of all, the ambience here is really nice. I really like the design here. The air condition has perfect temperature here. So this is already a first good impression here. And now the pizza in a jaw has arrived and it looks very interesting. I've never seen anything like this before. To be honest, it is a bit smaller than I would have expected. So I'm not sure if this is going to be enough to uh, fill my stomach. And also the, the whole staff is uh, looking at me now. <laughs> That's a bit funny. So they probably saw the camera and wondering like, what is this guy doing here now? But yeah, I think I'm actually going to use my fork. So of course you can't eat it like a regular pizza. To be honest, I don't really know why they call this pizza. It has nothing to do with the traditional pizza, right? But of course that doesn't mean that it can't taste good. So this is a chicken on top of here. Let me try that first. The chicken is a bit dry to be honest. And then we do have a lot of cheese here. So I see some uh, vegetables here, some chicken, the cheese. Oh, and there's a very strong tomato sauce flavor to it. Thank you. Together with the cheese, that's actually very nice. I also think that this is good quality cheese. The cheese tastes really good, actually. So, oh, it seems like there's actually some pizza dough in here. You see these parts here? That is actually pizza dough. It is a bit spicy. The waiter called it mildly spicy. And you know, sometimes when the locals call it mildly spicy, then for me as a foreigner, it's still very spicy. But this is actually right. Like, this is a spiciness level that I can handle. To be honest, the flavors are yeah, like a regular pizza. I mean, all the ingredients 
from the regular pizza are in here. It's just that the presentation is very unusual. So the taste is actually totally all right. Just the, the chicken is a bit dry, but the rest of the pizza, I especially like the tomato sauce in here. But yeah, definitely a very unique way to eat a pizza. All right, let's see what's the outcome. So the total bill, including two small bottles of water, is uh, 230 rupees. All right, that was a very interesting food experience. Let me know in the comments if you would be curious to try this. To be honest, I think this was interesting, but I think the next time I would prefer a regular pizza again. So yeah, overall, this was once again another very interesting day here in Delhi, India. And if you are curious to see my previous video where I've been to Paha Ganj, also a very interesting area here in Delhi, then feel free to check out the video right here. Stay healthy, stay positive, and then see you on the next episode. Ciao, guys.